come to just get used to the space because we ain't going nowhere, baby. <laughs> I know you're um, you're locked in on what people are saying uh, online, especially. Are you getting the love? Are you feeling the love from the people? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's still some people out there that's going to say the stuff that they want to say, but at the end of the day, I can't control that. Um, I'm going to just keep doing what I do, and that's working on what I need to work on. Uh, you know, I never once came out and said, guys, I'm this striker. I'm going to be just knocking guys out left and right, and then I go and I do something else. You know, I always tell you what the game plan is going to be. I plan to take you down. I plan to drown you on the ground, and, and that's it. You know, I have a really tough opponent in Henry Cejudo. He's a two-division champion for a reason. Man, that guy's fight IQ, making the adjustments he was making in real time with me. It was like as if I made an advancement, he made an advancement for my advancement. And then I would have to make an advancement for his advancement. And that's how the back and forth of a chess match this was. And I don't think people really understand the brilliance of that unless you were in there. Because you have to almost feel that energy to see what I'm talking about. Because there was things that the coach would tell me and then I went back and I looked at it a little bit. I'm like... Yeah, I saw that opening there, but there's a reason why I didn't do what they were telling me to do. It's because of what Henry was also doing at the same time. And uh, I got to give him some respect for that, but I think I did the universe a favor in uh, ending the cringe. So, uh, what, what impressed you most about him? His fight IQ. It's just one thing I could definitely be very complimentary of. He's a competitor. He didn't quit. He was there the whole time. Uh, I, I know there was some a little bit of bias criticism with my takedown entries and things like that. People don't understand, like, the takedown cost always necessarily meant to, like, get a takedown. Like, yeah, if I could shoot and be 100% with my takedown, that would be great. That's not realistic. I know there's going to be moments where I have to shoot, and the guys are going to defend it. They're going to have good hits. They're going to see it come in kind of thing. And with that being said, it's up to me to use that to now do what? It's almost like a faint. If I faint and then do nothing after, it's like, oh, what was the point of the faint? But now if I shoot and you defend and you sprawl hard, you can bite on that that, that fate of my takedown. Now I'm setting that up. Now you have to be conscious of me shooting. And you got you got it in the back of your head, like, I don't want to be down on the ground again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, there's a method to the madness, and I, I, I would like for the commentary to be a little bit more cognizant of some of the things that they're saying, like, oh, he's using up a ton of energy. I'm like, guys, I wouldn't do it if I didn't train you to, to this is a five-round fight against a legend. You guys think I'm going to come out there gas myself out. You guys think this is Tiola Yan, Aljamain Sterling. One day, never going to happen again. That was a one-time, once-in-a-lifetime hiccup of me not eating before the fight. And I would never, ever, I would never be that stupid enough to make that mistake again. That would be just be on me at that point, just a home hit. Um, so, yeah, it, I, I give him respect with that. A lot of high-level stuff. I know I had the crazy reach advantage, and I knew that was going to play a big factor in my favor. And I knew he was smart enough to get inside where he needed to. And he was even telling me to like throw the kick again so that he could time it because I knew that he was preparing for that and did a lot of things in preparation for my front kicks and stuff like that. So you had to be very cognizant and split second decisions. So I had to make sure that I was just on my P's and Q's the whole time. So. He was telling you this in the middle of the fight? He was kind of like he was kind of like giving like these these head nods. Like I would throw the body kick and spam it to the body. And it kind of reminds me of Devontae Davis and uh, I think Santa Cruz when they fought. And he'd do the same right hand like three times in a row. And Javante Davis just goes like, why would you do the same move three times? Like, like is that kind of like the dumbest thing you could do? And then it's kind of like that. So I'm doing it. He's kind of like, yeah. Like, leave anything on to like throw it one more time to see what happens. Like, fuck around and find out. So I had, I had to make sure like I had to like play that game a little bit with him. So it was definitely a high level battle. Um, I would appreciate maybe him fighting him again, to be honest. Because part of it, I, I want. I like to be dominant, and maybe there's a part of me that wants to like, do it in a way where I finish it. Because I know if I took him down earlier, when I got those positions where I got to his back, when I got the wrist control to lift him, now it was his uh, yeah, no, 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 no. early in the round. I think the fight's over. Um, I if I didn't give him that first round takedown and have to battle back, and I got the takedown first before he did, that sets the tone, and probably the fight's over right there also. So there's sequences where it's like, man, these moves, battles of brilliance from both of us really dictates the, the rest of the outlook of the fight. And that's what fighting is all about, and that's why it's such a beautiful sport. So you re-watched the fight? Not the whole thing. Okay. I, the main one I watched so far was round five before I came on here, because I actually kind of, you know, celebrating and enjoying the, the spoils of my... I know, the... 
my labor a little bit. Magnet. And uh, I got to watch round five. Because even in round five, I felt like I, I still won it, even though I, I thought I did more. But I watched it. I was like, the strike count was relatively even. I landed the spin back into the face where you know, he got his hands up at the last second. It pushes him all the way back. But I know there's more impact than like Magnet. physical complete damage, like a shot that sits versus something that's pushing. Or versus something where your opponent is moving and you're, you're pushing them with the momentum so it looks more impactful. So there was a lot of that that he was doing that it looked like it was hurting me more than what it actually was. And he got the takedown where he grabbed the table and threw me on my ass a little bit of that. And so I was like, I guess you could kind of get him that round. But it was a close round. So that was the main one I was really concerned about. But other than that, I, I thought the other ones like came down. But maybe round three you can give him. But other than that, I thought I definitely won the fight. Like, like, there was not a doubt in my mind that I won that fight easily two with the argument of a 4-1. Okay. Um, you get the moment. It's great. How do you feel about them bringing Sean in the cage immediately afterwards? Well, I mean, we did sign over the uh, WWE, right? So I guess that's what we're doing now. So, I don't know. It, at, at, that, at that moment, it's normally to build the next fight anyway. So, I think we did and accomplished what we were trying Hell to do. Yeah. So, yeah, so at the end of the day, it's kind of like it, it did its job, it served its purpose. I would have liked to have gone and say some of the things I wanted to say, thank some of the people that I would have liked to uh, thank. Um, I didn't know Jersey was going to be moving against me like that at the end. It was like, damn, what's yeah. going on? Like, I fought for you guys how many times, and now uh, you guys are cheering for Henry? Like, what is going on? Like, what world are we living in that now the world is rooting for Henry in, like, pretty much my backyard? Crazy. Well, I, I was just watching. I think you a 1,000% sold the fight. I think it's going to be used a million times. Whenever you guys fight, and we'll get to that in a moment, but I was just wondering if you felt at all like it took away from your moment. It's, you know, sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't, and I don't know if they boo you afterwards if that moment doesn't happen, so I, I just didn't know if you were annoyed at all by it. You think they booed me because he came in the cage? I think it was more because of him, yeah. Meaning, Sean is such a popular fighter, and then there was that whole exchange, and they're like, oh, you're the guy fighting Sean? Okay, now we're going to boo you. It's like. I don't know, that's how, that's how I took it. Maybe you feel otherwise. I didn't think it was a Henry thing over you, to be honest. Uh, well, I don't know. I felt like they started booing a little bit, or maybe the the, com the the clash of boos and cheers for the decision, maybe that's what probably was hard to hear and like decipher between, but maybe that is why, because Sean is like, I don't know, every young teenager's dream for some reason. It's like weird. It's like I got colorful hair, I got tattoos on my face, Smoke weed, I make funny videos, uh, I'm tall, uh, I'm a shoe show, <laughs> and uh, I say smoke weed, yeah bro, podcast and streaming. Uh, but it will be, I mean, do you agree, that would, uh, business wise, that will be the biggest fight of your career, right? 